long time then the goal for today is very simple it's just uh, to prove the we can theorem we can theorem okay uh, as i said i mean uh, in terms of literature uh, this was done in the dynamical system community dynamical system this was done by albert fati uh, in the pd community this is known as uh, you know so called cell problem or ergodic problem And this was done earlier. I mean, without the dynamical aspect, um, it was done earlier by uh, Leon's Papa Nicolau and Varada. Okay. And you can see that the statement so far of the Wickham theorem at this moment is not precisely like. Uh, what we had in our mind earlier um, in hopefully in the next lecture I will make sure that you know this uh, uh, this consistent with exactly what we we described the Wickham theorem earlier but for now for us uh, you know the theorem the main theorem for today is is going to be that there exists a function u minus that is ellipsis continuous ellipsis it doesn't matter such that uh, under the semi group, uh, you know, TT U minus, uh, TT minus of U minus plus is constant C0 of T equals to U minus for all T greater than or equal to zero. Okay. And that's that's a we can theorem stated in, in a, a bit different way. Um, and as you have seen, I mean, uh, so, uh, you know, we stated it earlier in a different way, but but I'll I'll try to uh, connect the dots and make sure that we are on the same page uh, in the next lecture. For for today, let's just prove it. Okay, um, so let's let's prove this theorem, and this is sort of essentially a fixed point theorem, right? Saying that you can find u minus, which is a nice initial data, so that um, you know your problem as you run the time. It's going to be, um, you know, like a, a fixed point uh, theorem. Okay, so maybe, a, 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 you know, so an equivalent way, I mean, we haven't proved this one, but an equivalent way would be that you can see the, the Cauchy problem utxt plus h of x dux t equals to zero in the torus cross Rn. And if you consider, I mean, the axis of function u minus that if you consider initial data u minus, then uh, uh, and u t u of x t is nothing but t t minus of u minus of x, and this turns out to be you know the the the, the solution to this Cauchy problem to be exactly uh, exactly of this uh, separable form. So it's, it's beautiful. And also that eventually later on you're going to see that the the uh, above statement is also equivalent to the fact that u minus um, u minus is a viscosity solution to the cell or ergodic problem that h of x the u minus of x is equal to c of zero on the torus. Okay, so those are those are equivalent statement, uh, but um, you know I'm I'm just throw them to you. I haven't proved why are they equivalent, but uh, but it's it's good to keep this picture in your mind. Okay, um, so um, let's let's do it. Okay, so the theorem is that. And, and that's basically the Wickham theorem. And, and to do the proof, I would need to do it in various steps. Uh, earlier, we have already doc, uh, talking about the, um, the, you know, 
dominated functions and we have been already talking about that c naught is is the smallest possible constant so that we have the existence of of of, of, of you know of sub solutions right so uh you know um so we're going to do it in various steps the first step is just to recall that you know c naught is the is the uh, smallest possible constant constant and uh, there exists a function u that is uh, Lipschitz of tn such that u is dominated by l plus c naught or equivalently that h of x du x is less than or equal to c naught almost everywhere in the torus okay so that's what we have early in the first step so you can see that the wickham theorem is something stronger right we would start with the fact that we have a sub solution in the almost everywhere sun where with the with the smallest constant c naught and then we would go from the fact that we have a such a, a sub solution and then we go from there to the point that we have you know a, a solution right i mean that's sort of the that's you know so going from a sub solution to uh to that we have a let's choose this color for now to to the point that we have a solution here i mean in this equivalent statement is an improvement right so it is not uh, obvious and as i said i mean in the dynamic or system community this is known as a wickham theorem and fatty only wrote it down in the 2000s era it's not not too long ago uh, in the pd community it was written down in 1987 uh, uh, there wasn't a, a, a dynamic component to it, uh, and eventually people realized that you know they are the same thing, and there are lots of hidden dynamic uh, properties, right? Okay, so um, so that's the starting point, and now this is uh, this is a, a, a uh, the next point is an interesting point. This is sort of a um, uh, uh, universal PD. Uh, sort of property that if you start with a sub solution and you run the run the semi group run the lux olegnic semi group or run the cauchy problem so you know take take u and run the lux olegnic semi group then you would have that uh, you know t maps to T, T, okay, I'm gonna, uh, uh, you know, ignore the minus here as well, because it's annoying. Uh, uh, T, T of U, X for any X plus C naught of T. So this map is increasing or non-decreasing. So this is a, 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 this, I would say that this is a universal PDE uh, phenomenon. that you know you take a sub solution and you run the cauchy problem then you know the uxt is increasing in time so it's it's really beautiful right it's not easy right it's, it's a little bit tricky what we do is that we start with uh, the initial data which is a sub solution we run the semi group or run the cauchy problem equivalently then we see that because of the sub solution property uh, the solution of the cauchy problem or the semi group is increasing with respect to time and then we would expect that you know because of the increasing property is going to be stabilized so as time goes to infinity it's going to reach certain um, equilibrium threshold and that threshold is good it's going to be what we need Okay, so that's sort of uh, that's sort of uh, the um, expectation. Okay, um, uh, um, so of course, I mean we can do a PD proof, but because this is already you know in the dynamic system framework, so I'm, I'm writing now exactly what we have, and you can see that uh, the this second statement is not too hard to deduce. Okay. Um, so to do that, we just need first to show that is. Um, greater than equals to ux at time zero. 
And you know, we are just using the fact that U is dominated from above by L plus C naught, right? And we write out the definition. If you take gamma T equals to X, you would have that, uh, you know, U of gamma T minus U gamma zero is less than equals to the action functional on the right-hand side, nothing surprising here, right? You know, so what we are doing here is that we are taking gamma T equals to X, we take any possible curves, this is gamma zero, any possible ones, and we have um, U gamma T minus U gamma zero is less than equals to the action functional. Right? And then, you know, this is U X, it's gonna be less than equals to U of gamma zero, move to the right, plus the action functional Right, C naught of t is just a constant. You take, uh, you know, uh, again, this is uh, this is a constant, right? It's it's not in it's not depending on the curves or anything. Now you take inf over this over gamma. Then 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 we deduce right away that u x is less than equals to, you know, t t of u x right plus C naught of t. Right. That, that's exactly um, the definition of the Lux Olechnik semi-group. So that's, that's that, that's beautiful. We have been able to conclude that uh, this is correct, that, you know, it's increasing, uh, you know, for any time it's greater than the initial data. And then we use the semi-group property, you know, like naturally if you take T prime greater than T, then you would run it for t prime minus t time first and then you kick the uh, the time t in later and you get the conclusion so so it's increasing or non-decreasing with respect to time okay so um again the idea is that uh is that you start with initial data to the luxolechnic uh, semi-group that's the sub-solution or super solution. Uh, in our case, we have a sub solution, uh, and then you run it. You have that the semi group is increasing, uh, and because it's increasing, it should be stabilized. So I mean, it should converge to something that's quite stable, and that sort of stabilized limit equilibrium is going to be exactly what we need in the end. Okay, and naturally, right? You know, you have we have t maps to uh, t t of u x plus c naught of t is non decreasing, right? And then we we expect that limit as t goes to infinity of this uh, semi group is uh, is something we want that that's sort of the goal okay in order to do so you know we would uh you know like uh right to do the analysis it's increasing right and it should be um lipschitz right uh we already knew that if you go just a little bit in time i mean this was the result we proved last time right if you go just for sigma greater than zero then the semi group is equilipsious everywhere maybe this is not a you know a great color just whatever um <laughs> so uh, it's it's lifts is nice right so it's already stabilized however we got to be careful right because uh we might just increase forever that it might go just blow up to infinity so in order to prove this stabilized converging to something that we want a natural and important step would be that we need to prove that it's about it from above, right? So that's the third step. Okay. So the third step is corresponding to the fact that we need to prove that our semi-group is about it from above. Um, um, there are different ways to do this. I wouldn't say that, I mean, what I'm writing down here is the only one. Uh, uh, there's probably should be uh, 
I don't know. Um, I, I know some some other proofs, but uh, they are probably of the same degree of complications. Maybe there's something that some proofs that are simpler. I don't know, but but the proof I'm presenting here is by contradiction. Okay. So we need to show that. Uh, so we want to show that first that it's bounded. T T U X plus C naught of T is bounded, right? I mean, once it's non-decreasing and bounded, then you know it's converging to uh, an equilibrium. Um, and to do so, well, I mean, we know that, um, you know, uh, in fact, because uh, as you, the, the starting point slipshifts, you know, that's one of the thing I asked you to do earlier, uh, last, I mean, by the end of last lecture, that if you start with uh, Lipschitz initial data, then in fact, you would have a TTUX plus C naught of T is uh, equilipsis. Um, you know, in X and T. Uh, okay, maybe there's, there's a better way to say it. It's Lipschitz, it's global. The lifts in X and T. Again, you know, earlier we would say that it's only lifts from time sigma to infinity globally, but because we start with with initial data that's lifts, so it's it's, it's global lifts in X and T. I'm not worried about this. Um, so you see that one is lifts, right? In order for us to not to be bounded, then it should increase to infinity in some sense right and 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 the proof by contradiction is looking a little bit twisted right i would say the assume by contradiction that uh, the semi group is not bounded then i can find delta and r greater than zero so that uh, so that the red box holds okay so you might look at the red box and say that this is a little bit um you know like um not natural, right? But if you think a little bit about that, well, I mean, you, you can say that this is in fact uh, reasonable to expect, right? Because, uh, because uh, if uh, for any time, for any time t greater than zero, we can find x that is x t such that I have a uh, T, T of U, X plus C zero of T, uh, X, T here, that is gonna be less than equals to U, X, T, okay? So if, if for any time I can find a point that the semi-group is less than equals to U, X, T, right? Then, then um, the Lipschitz property, Lipschitz of, uh, of the semi-group in X kicks in and this could imply that TT of UX plus C zero of T is gonna be less than equals to UXT plus a constant times X minus XT, right? And this whole thing is less than a constant, okay? So what, what, what it means is that if the semi-group is bounded from above by at some point, then it's gonna be bounded globally in X, right? And that, that would, imply that everything is bounded. So uh, for us to have a contradiction uh, that we are gonna need this, this red box here that I'm highlighting on the left panel that uh, we would need to see that maybe as we run the semi-group up for some time R, then we would gain some delta, okay? So the contradiction is um, contradict um, would give that if I run the semi group up to some time r, right? I would I would be greater than u x plus delta for all x, right? So this is what I get. This is the only way for me that you know if I keep repeating the semi group, then every step in R, I would gain delta and I would gain a lot of deltas when the time gets to infinity and hence 
uh, I, you know, the semi group wouldn't be bounded, right? Otherwise, you know, if it's it's the above statement here, if it's this statement above here, then the semi group would be bounded. So that's that's a that's sort of a proof by contradiction that that we have this phenomenon. Okay, and and clearly that um, as I said also that if you have that and because of the semi group property, you know. If you go to time r, you gain delta, and you repeat it once more, right? You would gain two deltas, and by 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 induction. And remember that the constant can be pulled out of the of the semi group easily, right? So, so that's why by induction we have that. If we go to time k times r, we would gain k times delta, right? Okay. So is is this the same delta for every k? Yes, it's the same delta for every k. Uh, so that's a good question. You know, if it's not the same delta, then I would be, uh, I, I, I would be um, um, doomed, right? Okay, but, 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 but you see that this is, this is already happening here, right? So I have, I have this one, the left hand side is greater than the right hand side. Okay, so let me do the semi group TR of TR UX plus C0 of R greater than equals to TR of UX plus delta. Okay, so I'm just applying the semi-group, right? Because remember that we have the um, uh, comparison principle, right? If, if the two initial data are comparable, I mean, one is greater than the other, then I run the semi-group, then, you know, one is still being greater than the other, okay? And um, so I run it once, uh, and you see that this, this is equivalent to the fact that I have T of 2R, UX, right? Uh, the constant can be pulled out. That's the point. Plus C0 times R is greater than equals to, and this thing is exactly, exactly uh, the above property, right? I can apply uh, the, this, this box here. So TR of UX is greater than equals to uh, um, UX plus delta minus C zero R, right? That's the R of UX. And then delta is just delta. This is exactly the thing that is uh, less than equals to T R of UX. So rearranging things, you get exactly, exactly that T two R of UX plus two C zero of, or C zero two R minus two delta is greater than equals to ux. And then you keep repeating it. And this is the same r and the same delta, right? So that's why the semi-group property is really beautiful. I said that, you know, earlier when we look at the semi-group property, we look at the comparison principles, everything things are, everything look like, you know, uh, quite simple. But in a way you can think of it, this one is like, uh, uh, I don't know, it's, um, I was about to say something, but anyway, okay, fine. Let, 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 uh, let's not get distracted. This is exactly that, okay? And then uh, once I can repeat it multiple amount of times and I keep gaining, gaining, gaining more and more deltas and that's sort of like reasonable when and why that uh, as the time goes to infinity, the semi-group is not bounded, right? So thanks a lot for the question, and that's really important. Okay. If I take different R's and different deltas for each of the step, then I wouldn't be able to get to something going to infinity. I see. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, sometimes if I hold the pencil out a lot, then it sort of loses the signal or something. All right. So um, great. Uh, and you know, this is somehow related to the proof of ergodicity or proof of fecate lemmas or something, you know, like wh whatever. I mean, but I guess that it's, it's a natural proof anyway. Okay, so because we gain that delta, so I would define now C is C naught minus delta over R because, because I realized that, you know, again, something, some small positive number every step and uh, because C not times R minus delta seemingly is a corresponding constant, right? And then I have to pull the R out. So, you know, like uh, I have C not times R minus delta seemingly is a, a correspond, correct 
constant and if I pull r out I would have c naught minus delta over r times r right so we denote by this one is a new constant c okay so you you let that to be a new constant c so it's less than c naught what I'm doing now is that I'm going to prove that this little c is also admissible so it's also a, an admissible dominated constant but that that is uh, absurd, right? Because C naught was the smallest possible one. There couldn't be anything smaller than C naught, okay? And uh, to do so, again, uh, recall that we have this property that, you know, like, it's not correct, uh, it's not yet correct for all time, right? It's only correct for each of the time step, K times R, for K being natural numbers and R is some, some you know, fix a positive number. Anyhow, again, the proof is surely very smart. Uh, we are now using the sort of uh, the instability uh, the, of, of the semi-group, right? Uh, not yet that I have, uh, uh, you know, the, the stability when it goes to infinity, but now I know that, um, what I know that uh, TT of UX plus CT is sort of still increasing, sort of still, not, not, not quite, but only increasing for time step K times R. Uh, now I'm gonna define WX to be infimum of, of this whole semi-group with, with the new C, not C naught. Um, so because of this star property here, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, quite, uh, quite uh, clear that W is finite and well-defined. You know, you can check me. And in fact, by the semi-group property, we have, we have that in, I, I don't have to define the infimum for all time, right? I only have to define the infimum from time zero to R. Okay, so let me explain quickly why. So yeah, this is a time, right? This is zero R to R r so on and so forth so uh, we define wx to be infimum in all time of tt of ux plus ct okay we have shown that uh you know going in 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 the time step zero r two r three r we got that uh uh ux is less than equals to t of kr of ux plus c of kr, right? So clearly that if this at u at zero is less than the initial data at kr, right? Then you run the semi-group again from, from, from that time, right? So this would imply that t, uh, t, t of ux plus uh, C R is going to be less than equal to T T plus K R of U X plus uh, C of K R plus T. I think this would be T, right? Because you, you just run the same group again. Again, that's still the comparison principle. Okay, so that meant that that because you know it's increasing. This one, this piece is going to be greater than the the first piece, right? From zero to R, and you know. Other pieces afterwards, this piece and other pieces afterwards is also greater than the, the initial piece of time from zero to R. So clearly that although we define W to be infimum in all time, but only the first time from zero to R matters, right? Only this, this first uh, amount of time matters. And that's much better, right? Because although we define the infimum for the whole family, I mean, for all time, but it turns out that just equals to the infimum for the time from zero to R, okay? So that's that's the explanation. And I said here that surely W is Lipschitz. You check me and that's exactly what I asked you to do in the last uh, uh, last part, uh, last time, right? If you start with U, which is already Lipschitz, then the semi-group is, is always Lipschitz. And now I claim that W is bounded, dominated from above by L plus C. Because once I have that, I'm done. Because uh, W is dominated from above by L plus C. Um, 
uh, and that means that C is admissible, but C is less than C naught. C naught is the smallest admissible constant, hence the contradiction. Um, in fact, honestly, I don't really need W to be Lipschitz to start with, but I mean, it's just naturally Lipschitz. Any question for me up to this point? Uh, is there a beginning? Can you go back to the equation where you set the separable um, UXT? Yeah. Yeah, sure. is that the, like a sign? mistake over there because ut plus x is c naught. oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah sure it's the minus sign. yeah thank you yes absolutely yeah should be the uh, u minus x minus c zero t absolutely thank you is it exactly what 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 you yes. said yes okay thank you. Yeah. thank you yeah um right yeah i'm sorry that you know there are too many minuses here floating around, so I'm, I'm also confused with myself. Uh, I'm trying to respect Patty in the fact that he's saying that this is sort of like backward or uh, weak cam solution of negative type. And then he put, you know, sort of, you know, minuses everywhere. Uh, okay, so great. Um, okay, so I am I am here in, in, in the third step. Uh, that we have already defined W is well defined, Lipschitz and everything. And now I'm going to use instability. And you see, I mean, again, this instability is amazing. It's it's natural for the first order equation, not not natural for the second order ones. So let's prove it. Um, what do we have? So um, I'm just running the semi-group property. Uh, so in fact, I'll, I'll mention to you. Uh, w dominated uh, by L plus C is equivalent to the fact that W is uh, less than equal to the semi-group for any time, actually. Um, I'll, I'll just mention it soon, but let, let me just do the proof and then I'll mention it to you why. It's already hidden in the definition anyway, right? So um, that's another beauty of considering the semi-group. Um, you know, you just, you just look into what is the, CS acting on W plus CS, right? So the semi-group of W. And you write out the definition, right? Of, of W is, is the infimum of this family. And because of the inf stability, we can pull the inf out. We can take the infimum out. So it just, you know, inf of, of T greater than zero of inside is, uh, inside here is uh, T of, S plus T acting on UX uh, plus C of S plus T, but inside here, you know, like the thing inside here, it's just, you know, a piece of W, right? I mean, W is infimum everything. And, and, and each of the thing inside here is greater than W and then you take inf outside, it's just inf of a subfamily, right? So all in all, the whole thing is greater than equals to W. And that's it. So what it means is that, you know, W is always less than, than, less than equals to your semi-group. And because of that, W is dominated from above by L plus C. And we concluded that C is less than the, the smallest possible one. And that's the contradiction. Okay, so that's, that's the third step. So let me, let me, um, let me repeat. Just just recall this one so that you are comfortable with that. So W is less than equals to uh, is dominated from above by L plus C. This is equivalent to in the PD language is H of X. The W is less than equals to C almost everywhere in the torus, right? That's the first thing. And today we see the second thing is that this is equivalent to the fact that uh, W of X is uh, less than equals to the semigroup T T. There's a minus, but I'm, I'm, I'm omitting it for all t, right? So uh, just run the semi-group. Um, and that's a natural one, right? Because uh, 
uh, you know, so uh, so recall that uh, change the color. So that we call that the first thing here is equivalent to the fact that you have uh, W of gamma T minus W of gamma zero is less than equals to the action, right? Plus CT. And this is equivalent to W of X for gamma T equals to X less than equals to uh, W of gamma zero plus integral from zero to T L of gamma gamma dot ds plus CT. And you know, this is exactly the same like the first step we proved this is a constant and you take um, inf over gamma. Then you see that this is exactly equivalent to the fact that WX is less than equals to the semi-group TT of WX plus CT for all two. Okay, and this is equivalent, meaning that you can go also vice versa, right? Because uh, you know that's exactly the semi group is the in thing. So if it holds, it holds for all curves, and 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 that's what we have. All right, so um, so great. Uh, we have so let me just summarize it. We are nearly done. We started with uh, with uh, the semi group with the given. Initial data is a subsolution, and it's a universal phenomenon in, in PD is that if you do so with the subsolution, then your semi group or your Cauchy problem going to give an increasing solution in time. Then we have proved uh, that uh, although they are increasing, but they are about it from above universally, right? And because they are about it from above and equilibrious, you can see that. Uh, they converge in a uniform way to 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 a limiting function, right? And 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 that's exactly step four. There's nothing here, so I take this one. It's they converge uh, uniformly to u minus, and remember that remember that the global Lipschitz property here is important uh, because we can just conclude that um, they converge globally, right? Of course. Uh, of course, um, you can also use the Halley theorem here, right? If, uh, by the Halley theorem, I forgot, is it Halley selection theorem or Halley's theorem? If you have a sequence of increasing or decreasing functions, and if, if your space is compact and stuff like that, then you have that, uh, you have to be careful, but, uh, but if, if, they converge to something and given some conditions and they're going to converge uniformly. Uh, however, you know, we don't, we don't really need to use the Halley selection theorem here because we have everything is equilibrious. So you can just use the normal Azil Ascoli theorem. So they converge uniformly in an increasing way to U minus. And this is why also global Lipschitz property is important if you only have local property then sometimes uh, studying last time behavior is hard. You know, some of you here are working on, on uh, you know, uh, on on problems that if you know if you don't have uh, global Lipschitz properties, then you might not have uh, last time behavior actually. So this is in a nutshell. This is sort of a last time behavior result, right? We have proved that, uh, you know, given some specific initial data, that's a subsolution. We have proved that. The semi group or the Cauchy problem converge to to uh, to a solution at infinity, so it's an equilibrium, right? Uh, and eventually, let me conclude, and we have a little bit of time for discussion. We conclude that this limit satisfying uh, this the the um, uh, the uh, you know equilibrium property uh, so or it's a fixed point theorem whatever that meant so you have that uh, the the semi group acting on u minus is exactly u minus and you know uh, there were two equivalent uh, characterizations that i wrote up there um, okay and i claim that this is easy this is easy why because it's already stabilized remember okay uh, it's in converges uh, increasingly to something and this something is really stable already right it, it's 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 
I don't know how to put it, but it's sort of through a process that, you know, there's absolutely no change or no oscillation. And, and, and you could see it directly because of the, you know, of, 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 of the, of the limit here, right? Because if you take any, okay, maybe the best way just to look at the proof and you see what I meant by stabilize here. If you take any time S, you take the semi-group acting of time S on the limit and you can just write out, right? This, the time S acting on the semi-group and, and you, um, um, what? Uh, U minus is being written explicitly in terms of this limit, right? So because U minus is the limit of, 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 of a good process. And because it's a semi-group, right? So you can put the, you know, TS and TT together to form TS of T, right? TS plus T. So it's equal to just, just to the limit as t goes to infinity of t s plus t, right? But remember, limit as t goes to infinity of t s plus t is just, you know, limit of this t t bar. You know, I'm just writing here, uh, I'm just writing here t bar is nothing but t plus s, right? So this one is also going to infinity. So this is what I meant by being stable, right? If you shift it a little bit in time, but the whole thing goes to infinity in time anyway, and it's already the unique limit when it goes in time to infinity. So it's still exactly uh, u minus of x. And that's it. That's that's a proof of the Wickham theorem. Okay. Um, so the key point, I, let, let me just make a remark. So remark is that the key point here is that is that I have t t of uh, u x plus c t already uh, c not t already converged to um, to u uh, u minus of x anyway right so if I take uh, uh, t s of u minus x this can be essentially taught well, not thought of, but this is exactly the limit as t goes to infinity ds of tt of u minus x plus c naught of t, right? Uh, what I'm saying, uh, yes, I need to plus, uh, ds u minus x plus c naught of s, right? Plus c naught of s. But you know, the whole thing is that you can couple the time here and here together. And this is essentially equals to t s plus t of u minus x plus c naught of t plus s, right? And this is just like the limit as t plus s goes to infinity. And this is exactly u minus of x anyway. It's still the same limit, and that's why it's the limit is quite stable under under the semi group. It's the same semi group, so that's why it's stable. Okay, and that's it for today. Um, you know, um, uh, as I said, I mean, uh, at this moment, if you have time over the weekend, you can watch Fatih's ICM talk in two thousand fourteen. Uh, that's exactly about this Wickham theorem. Um, you know, that's that's a, a big achievement. It's a, it's a, to my view, it's a sort of well postness point, saying that hey, now I have this sort of like existing theory for the Wickham theorem, or you know whatever, or you know in an equivalent way to a uh, to the stationary problem, or you can say that okay, this. Um, Cauchy problem has a good step separable solution. So that's a well-posedness result. And then one has to go deeper to dig deeper and understand deeper by the dynamic, but it's a good start. Um, any questions or concerns or discussion with me? So is this, is this U minus unique? No, good question. No, then uh, it's not unique. I see, so is it possible to take different, different uh, functions U and get different limits then? Yes, okay. absolutely. So, um, so um, 
um, you know, this is the starting point. Um, what's that? So, so this is a just an existing result, right? It's it's it's, it's not about uh, nothing about uh, nothing about yet the deep properties of 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 uh, of, of, of things. So you that we took from the beginning and u minus uh, as the limit are not unique in general. So if you take different starting points, you might end up with, with, with different limits. And as it turns out, later on, we're gonna prove a very deep result saying that even if you start with any, any uh, uh, initial data that just need to be continuous on the torus, we still converge to, to something in the limit that, that's still a fixed point. So that's remarkable, but, but, but uh, it's gonna take us quite some time to get there. But, uh, but, but that's, that's also a very good question here that, that the limit is not, are not unique. And in fact, to understand about solution to the, cell or ergodic problem. You know, H of X dux equals to C naught in the torus. Uh, you know, the question on, on, on characterizing all solution here is a very important question. And that's actually gonna be part of our goals in the, in the you know, last six weeks of, of, of the class, we're gonna try. Uh, so, uh, so there, there can be many, be many solutions. A easiest example is that you take U to be a solution, then U plus C is also a solution, right? Uh, for constant C, but there can, there are much more. So we're gonna characterize them in something called, in terms of the matter set or the Aubrey set. So they are sort of uniqueness set to characterize, to help us to characterize all possible solutions. And for first order equation in the abstract sense, it's pretty well understood. Second order equation, it was only done recently um, and still lots of things to, uh, to be understood well. And even so for first order equation is not known at all for like uh, non-convex Hamiltonian. And that's that's a big question. So that I, I don't know what to do. Um, uh, so part of the goal, part of our goal goes in the, in the next part of the class is to characterize all. or in terms of invariant measures or invariant sets, okay? So I can say that in the abstract sense, we can characterize them all. Um, I wouldn't be too comfortable to say that we have really deep understanding about them because uh, because we're going to characterize them in terms of invariant sets and measures that are also a bit abstract. Right? So uh, mathematically, we do understand them pretty well, pretty well, but not to the deep level that I would like to. And I think that there's still lots of things to be understood deeper there, um, you know. Uh, and, and in this direction, there's something called the Manis conjecture that is still pretty much open. <laughs> but I mean, that's, that's for generic sense. I, I don't know, it's, 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 it's uh, 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 you know, for Manis conjecture, for example, then in the generic sense, they say that this kind of invariant measure or invariant set, it's just only one point or a periodic orbit and uh, there are very little results there, uh, you know, maybe just in, in 2D and, um, you know, people belong to PD or dynamical system have been trying and they only get some partial results. Uh, uh, recently, there's a paper by Figali, for example, in, 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 in two dimensions, 3D or higher, it's not well understood. 
Any other concerns? Yeah, but it's interesting. I mean, you guys are in uncharted uh, territory already. So sometimes, you know, keep this thing in your mind, come up with cool ideas. I don't know, sometimes your ideas can be really general or good that could be applied to various problems. Or sometimes the ideas are very specific, but could handle some very deep questions, you know. Uh, this kind of questions that cannot be, I, I, I think that there needs to be tools, uh, very delicate and specific tools to understand this kind of question, not, 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 not a general tool. Okay, uh, so uh, if there's no further question, then thank you all. And then I'll see you uh, on Monday and we try to do a bit more on uh, maybe another proof of the Wickham theorem and then try to, you know, connect the dot. Why did I state the Wickham theorem this way? And is it really equivalent to the earlier form? So I'll, I'll connect the dots and tell you that hidden here in this sort of like framework of the um, hidden here in the framework of the of the semi group is already the um, uh, the uh, the backward characteristics or the calibrated curves going from minus infinity to zero. Right? It's it's not clear here, but you can see that it's clear in the sense that you have your semi group go from grows from zero to infinity, right? And that's going to help us to create the calibrated curves correspondingly. Right, so see you soon and hopefully that everyone is staying well, uh, safe and healthy and, uh, you know, uh, be aware of your surrounding of certain crisis. Also, I don't know, um, there are lots of turbulences out there. So I don't know what to say, but uh, yes. um, don't get too much upset about those. Right, so see you later. Bye for now. Thank you.